Welcome back, Team DWC. It's your boy TWP Popcorn. To her, I know what time it is. Wednesday, 6 p.m. Stop over here by the trap house real quick. Show y'all the quick analytics. Sunday's video, this Saturday's video, so you know. It'll go up by tonight, because tonight's Wednesday. Uh, it's about time to get some more of these big boy spikes. You know, I'll be putting out some more shorts this week, so they coming up. It'll be better by the time y'all see the weekend. <laughs> Shouts out to my Mondays. Mondays videos be getting it in. Speaking of getting it in, thank y'all for running the playlist. Either the West Poppin', the TWP, or the Team DWC playlist. So we can get these watch time hours up so we can be YouTube monetized because, you know, we should qualify. I got content that's, you know, kind of system friendly too. So, you know how we do. But I ain't going to hold y'all up. Let's get to the video. Okay, my friends, you asked for it, and here it is. The number one most important of all fertilizers you can be making for your garden. Now, I'm going to say a little bit about it, then we'll go outside, I'll show you exactly how to make this stuff, and then we'll come back in, and I'll tell you how long you have to wait to use it, and how to use it exactly. So, watch the video, and make sure, watch it a number of times if you have to, to make sure that you have a thorough understanding of not only the process, but the principles, because they are really, the philosophy is one and the same. So, <clears throat> what's the best fertilizer that we can give to our plants? Well, to understand this, we must first look to nature, the original organic garden, the original sustainer of everything. And we see, when we look deeply into the inherent perfection of nature, we will see that here is how the plants operate. Even though nobody fertilizes them, Nobody, nobody crop, crop rotates in nature, nature. Nobody, nobody does anything, anything to them, yet yeah, year, year after year, year they become, become more and more fertile, fertile. the land, land becomes more fertile, and the trees become stronger and healthier, and all plants do if left by themselves. Now how do they do that? Well, the roots of the plant go down deep into the earth, and they mine the exact type of minerals that that plant needs in order to survive. Then, using the power of the sun, it combines the air and the water and the elements to create the exact type of sugars that it needs and that it knows that the community of microorganisms in the soil that it depends upon, that they also need. And then it will produce the plant tissue itself. And it says, okay, well, we need to reproduce, of course, for the next years. So how does it do that? One, One way, way is that it creates a fruit, and, and this, this fruit, fruit contains, contains a seed, and the seed... Okay, the fruit contains a seed, what the seed want. That's exactly why I got the beat bumping in the background. Shouts out to DJ Is. I know to go check out his Bob Me a Coffee, his Apple. Just go to this channel and then you're going to figure out really everything you need to be figuring out. The seed is out. information. It tells, it, it, it is the blueprint on how to construct the factory that is going to combine the elements to create another one of these exact things. It's, it's mind-blowingly perfection. 
And so it does this by saying, okay, here's the seed. Now we are going to give it everything that it needs in order to thrive already contained within it. And that's what's in the fruit, everything that the plant needs to survive. It is the same with all of them. The peach, the peach will grow and it will fall to the ground. Some of it will get carried off by humans or bears or whatever it is and spread that way. But for the most part, most of them will simply decompose. And year after year, season after season, the land becomes exactly custom tailored to the fertility that this plant needs. That's how nature does it. It never crop rotates, it never moves the plants, it never switches this or out, and it never removes a whole bunch of the, uh, of the fruits. Only the human farming does that. And so for that reason, when we have a garden or a farm, we must replenish these exact nutrients that our plants need. So how are we gonna do that? We are going to take the actual plant itself and create fertilizer for that plant in the fashion of the Jadon liquid fertilizer. In the barrel with the leaf mold and the water. We ferment it. I'm giving you this video now because it's towards the sunset of the season in the northern hemisphere. So you can use all the plant residue from this uh, season. Now, we can use this in one of two ways. One way is if we are a farmer. And we, or we have a lot of specific crops. If I grow spinach or cabbages or celery or something, you know, lots of them for market or whatever it is, then I'm going to create barrels of only cell, uh, of only spinach or of only cabbage with the leaf mold and the water. And that is going to break down and it's going to provide everything that that crop needs. That's how it works. Now. If you are a home garden, which is mostly what I'm making this for, because a lot of you guys have asked me, okay, Nate, uh, this is cool, all these fertilizers and stuff, but I'm not into that mad scientist kind of stuff. I got buckets all over the place and, you know, stuff, which is, I love that kind of stuff. But um, if you just want one fertilizer, here's how you do it. Uh, towards the end of the season, right about now, you take all the residues from the plants and you combine them into one barrel. You put uh, some, some of your eggplants, egg some of your peppers, some of your collard greens, some of your spinach. You put it into the barrel, you add the leaf mold, you fill it up with water, and you uh, put the lid on. And next year, you're going to have perfect fertilizer for all those crops that you have been growing. Now, I'm going to take you outside and show you exactly what I'm talking about with visual examples so that you can see uh, and, and then, then I'm going to say a few, few we'll come, come back, back in and, and I'll give you a few very important tips on how to how use it and, and uh, I will put one of your main concerns to rest. First step is to acquire a container with an airtight lid. It can be either a barrel like this or a five gallon bucket, but whatever container you choose has to have a tight fitting lid to keep it all from evaporating. And then, if it's your first time making it, fill the container half full with whatever crops you are growing. Or, or if, if like, like here, here you can just, just top it off because I've already I've made mine months ago or a couple years ago. And you can just add whatever crops you are growing. It doesn't matter if they got a bit of disease, as I'll explain. Uh, this um, eggplant that the cat destroyed, I'm just going to put it in there with the, with the roots and everything. We're going to put in some Swiss chard because we grow lots of that. We're going to put in some cucumbers that got too big and I can't use them because we grow lots of that. Uh, and then we're just going to stir it all up and that's going to start to break down and produce the best plant nutrition for the plants that we grow. And this has already been breaking. There is so much produce in here. It's incredible how well everything has broken down these past two years. Now, if it's your first time, you want to add a shovel full of leaf mold. If, it, if you're just topping it off like I'm doing here, just a handful or two will work. And I'll very soon have a video on exactly how to acquire this ideal leaf mold. And I'll put a link to that video here. But many of you are saying, Nate, I live in the desert. I have no access to leaf mold. What can I do? Okay, in your circumstance, it is acceptable to use the high quality finished compost that you have made. So here I will go to the very bottom of my compost bin that is in contact with the ground. And I'm going to acquire the rich, succulent, beautiful black compost. And it's going to be nice and dark. And it's going to smell of earth. It's not going to smell rancid. It just is delicious. 
and we're going to add a few handfuls of that to the bucket. Then we're going to give it a good stir so everything's mixed up. Then we're going to put our tight-fitting lid back on because we do not want it to evaporate. And make sure that it's mostly full with water. If you have to top off, you can. And secure the lid and let it work. Okay, I can hear some of you already. Nate, what about the ones with the disease? I don't want to spread the disease. Well, that's not actually how it works. Contrary to popular belief, uh, all, mostly all diseases already exist in the soil. Powdery mildew is already in the soil. Blight is already in every handful of soil. Corn smut already exists in every handful of soil, practically. They, but they are kept in check by a series of checks and balances through microorganism activity. And so, and so only, only once that, that balance is thrown off are they allowed to proliferate. The balance is thrown off through either modern industrial or you know, modern agricultural practices or a nutrition deficiency in the soil. A number of causes can, can uh, cause a proliferation of the disease. But this is not going to spread it in any way because healthy, good, strong, healthy plants can resist all of this. It's all kept in check by a vibrant plant and the and soil, soil food web. So, so by, by utilizing these ferments, fermenting it with the leaf mold, mold and also using the j microbial, microbial solution on our, on our land, land, we are, we are not gonna have to worry about diseases, diseases okay? okay. Uh, so, so, how long, how long do, do I have, have to wait to use this stuff? That's a big question I get from you guys. Now, if it's in the blazing sun, it can in about three weeks it's ready to use. So, because everything breaks down real fast. You just skim some off the top and then utilize it. And then once the barrel gets down uh, to about half or the bucket or whatever, then you add more water. Um, but these barrels, and I'll show you how, I'll make videos how to prepare them for the winter time. But I leave them outside and I'm in zone 5B, 6A, they freeze solid for like two months straight. So, but you have to prepare them in a certain way. It's not gonna harm anything, okay? But it gets better with time. So make it now for next season. Cause if in the springtime, if you put this stuff on your crops, they are gonna thrive. They are gonna love this stuff, my friends. Okay, so uh, I want to dilute this and apply it the same way as the other videos that I've shown. I'll put a link to that video here, how I apply this stuff. And you're going to want to use it at start at 1 to 50, you know, and you can adjust it from there. One, one part fertilizer to 50 parts water, you can adjust it from there. All the way up to 1 to 300 is still effective. All the way to 1 to 20 if you've got really nutritionally poor soil, okay? But uh, just watch that video that I linked like to and you'll see how I apply it and all of that, okay? So, uh, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, now you got the secret formula. So, if you feel like you're getting something from the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. It doesn't really matter what it is. Just first thing that comes to mind. And big shout out to everyone that is using the link in the description to make a donation to the PayPal account or the super thanks button down there in the corner. All of that helps to keep these videos coming with more and more. So, thank you. I will see you next time, my friends. scented transplants just like these are getting super expensive. In this video, I'm going to show you some tips on how to get free transplants from the garden center. And it's 100% legal. Hey, Jason, you want to Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help take your garden to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. So first of all, I have to say, I hardly ever buy transplants. They're very expensive, way more expensive than buying seeds, and they're actually, you get less variety than if you were to look through a seed catalog. And depending on the transplant, they could actually be less robust and actually grow slower than just planting the seed to begin with. So what are the advantages to transplants from the garden center? Well, if you choose the right ones, 
they will move off to a faster start and they will give you an earlier harvest than having to plant the seeds and wait for that whole process to take place and then take care of them until fruiting. They can also rescue you from a mistake. See my video yesterday. Or they can rescue you from pests and disease issues that wipe out your seedlings and you just don't have the time or the heart to start all over again. Let's face it, it's much easier to go to the nursery and buy nice big transplants than it is to go through the seed starting process. Not quite as rewarding, but easy. It feels like, especially on YouTube, there is some kind of taboo around buying garden center transplants. The thing out there seems to be if you don't grow it from seed, you're not a real gardener. Let me know in the comments if subconsciously you kind of picked that up on YouTube. And I might have put it out there myself not even knowing. I'm not sure where that all came from, but there is no shame in starting your garden from transplants. Due to an issue I had this year, uh, I, my garden is way behind where it should be. Now normally I wouldn't care because I have a long growing season here and it would just push everything off a little bit. But this year, I'm actually having a professional film crew come to the garden to do some filming for a project that's not mine. I can't remember what it is yet, but hopefully soon. And I want to have something more for them to look at than, you know, all my garden being only a foot tall. So I'm kind of behind the eight ball. I really don't have time to sow everything from seed and just have a camera ready in eight weeks. It's not going to happen. So a little over a week ago, I went to a, a local garden center and I bought a bunch of transplants. I'm still growing seed because I'm going to have things at different uh, ages when that camera crew comes, but I definitely want some plants that are grown and producing. And so these transplants will give me that in eight weeks. When I was at the garden center, I realized how much of a taboo there actually is because I ran into a viewer there who came up and talked to me and she had transplants in her cart and was actually a little embarrassed about it. I could tell. Well, I could tell and she said that. And I told her, hey, look at my cart. It happened. There's no shame in it. Don't worry about it. The main disadvantage, uh, other than the variety you get from seed, is the cost of the transplant. Some of it just doesn't make financial sense at all. Like I saw a pot this size with one head lettuce in it. It cost five dollars. I don't know where you are, but I can go to the local organic grocery store and get a head for probably a little less than five dollars, and I didn't have to water it, feed it, grow it for a couple of months. Cabbage is another one. You get one cabbage head, might be huge, but one cabbage head from one seed. And it takes a long time for cabbage to pr produce. I mean, I planted mine in, what, October, November, and they're just now, uh, most of them are ready to harvest. In fact, if you're not subscribed to our Homestead channel and you're interested in making sauerkraut, we're going to be doing a harvest of this um, cabbage and making sauerkraut on one of our next videos coming up very soon. Next level homestead, go check it out. So it will be $5 for that cabbage at the garden center, and then months and months of water and food and care to get one cabbage. So you really want to buy some transplants if you want wanting to save money uh, that produce a lot of fruit over a long period of time, and then that makes it somewhat worthwhile. But there are other things that you can do, little secrets that garden centers don't want you to know about that can maximize your dollar. So let's go over what I spent last week at the garden center on these transplants. So I have six packs here, little six cell things, and then I have um, pots, just like this. The six packs were $4.99. Pots were also $4.99. So I could get six plants for the same price as I can get one. Now you might think that in that one plant, maybe it's a little bit bigger, a little bit, little bit further along, but take a look. It's not always the case. Not to mention, a lot of times in a pot, especially if they've been growing there a while and they're large, they might be a little bit root bound. Like this one, like I can't even get it out right. 
And so that has stunted their growth. So when you put in something like that that has its growth stunted, let's see, no, so good. Something that's had its growth stunted in a pot like this versus newer, maybe even smaller uh, transplants that come in a six pack, as long as they're not root down, they can take off even quicker than a larger plant in a larger pot. So when you look at anything at the garden center, I really recommend that you loosen it up, pull it out, and just make sure that the roots look good. That they don't have enough spiraling around and around at the bottom and you see more roots than soil. You don't want that. Put it right back and check for another one. So price-wise, in almost all cases, six packs are gonna be your best bet. That's why I don't shop for transplants at Home Depot or Lowe's or some of your big box stores because they really carry mainly bonnie plants and they only come in a larger pot for a larger price tag. Now one thing you want to look at is can, be, uh, can make a pot like this if you are, if all you have is a big box store um, and you can only get pots like this, look for one that has multiple seasons growing in the same pot. This one has three. This is butternut squash. I can get three different plants out of my $4.99. It's still not as good as $4.99 for six plants, but it's better. And then look at the six pack here of okra. There are two to three okra plants in each cell. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15 okra plants for $4.99. That's a good deal. Not as good as seeds, but we're not talking about that right now. Or look at this basil. A six pack with probably 50 to 100 transplants in here. Now, I'm not gonna be able to separate each individual basil plant out. They've got great root systems, they're not root down. Uh, but I can divide it. So how I would divide this is I would just tease it apart. So these okra first. Just kind of tease them apart. You can actually dunk them in water and get most of the soil off of them. It makes it a little bit easier to uh, separate the roots. And then get a clean six pack with some cream moist and potting soil. And then just gently plant them right into that soil. Try to spread the roots out a little bit. Don't make them in a big clump and try to hold your plant by the leaves and not the stem. A leaf rips off, your plant can still live. Same thing with the basil, it's just gonna be a little bit more tedious of a surgery because there's so many more plants here. But I always love to see how many I can get singled out and separated out of a clump like this. Now you can also plant these after you divide them into the ground directly. Um, I prefer to put them back in a six pack or something like this. You can control them just a little bit better. I'm actually gonna take these and protect them uh, because when you do trans you've done a little bit of surgery. They've had roots broken, they've been handled. So I'm going to put them in the house under my Vitrospector grow light for about a week or two until I really see that they're starting to grow. We've got a couple of sets of leaves on them, new sets, and then I will put them outside after hardening them off. Now I'm using the Vitrospector K55000. I did a review video on this. Uh, a few weeks ago, I'll link that down in the video description. It's a great light, it's uh, large, it comes with a large footprint, and it can grow your plants. So if you're looking for indoor growing, this is a great light for that. It can grow them from seedling stage all the way to fruiting and flowering, all the way to adult. Now, if you are planting them directly into the ground, if you don't want to take the trouble to go through those extra steps, make sure you put some potting soil in the hole. Don't just put it in the garden soil. Those roots are used to very fine soil, and they want to be able to kind of grow through that and get a little bit older and more mature before they head into your heavier garden soil. So just make a little nest and, and put them in there, water them in well, and they should take off just fine. By far, my favorite way to uh, get plants started, most of the plants, is by seed. More variety, save you money, but in a pinch, or if you need it, or you just don't have the time to look after seedlings, these are some tips that I hope will help you out. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.
the top 10 things you should be buying at Dollar Tree this March 2023. And with so many new products, this could be my best Dollar Tree video yet. In the first spot, an ingenious little product to start spring cleaning off right. It's a microfiber fan duster. If you have any ceiling fans in your home, you know how they can accumulate dust. And they're not the easiest to clean. This <coughs> fully around the fan's blades so they can be dusted using just one. <coughs> and this product is well worth its $1.25 price. Solar step lights are brand new to attach to the underneath of your stairs or a stairwell for outdoor use. Dollar Tree has both a circular and this triangular design. These could also function well on a fence post. If you prefer a solar light with a stake design, these lantern style ones are a highly sought after product this March. There's even this one with a little butterfly on the interior of the light. These premium looking refresh car odor eliminators are a charcoal based purifier pack that can be recharged, so to speak, by placing them under the sun for a few hours, so they work time and time again in cars, gym bags, and they are a lot cheaper than the versions you'll find sold on Amazon. Point two begins with Kendall and Kylie backpacks. When I first saw these names side by side, I thought, that's some nice alliteration. Then I was informed by another Dollar Tree shopper, this is in fact made by a sister of Kim Kardashian. So, so, if, if you, you like, like that, that type, type of thing, thing here, here you go. go. With, With sunny days, days on the horizon, horizon Dollar, Dollar Tree has a whole new range of sunglasses and some classic and now modern, modern designs. designs. To better protect, protect your sunglasses, I found these flower eyeglass, eyeglass pouches, pouches which seem to be of a nice quality, and, and my, my daughter, daughter would lose her mind over these floral varieties. Speaking of family, I love these custom letter glass containers. Whether it's cereal for Mara, cookies for my wife Daria, or some type of treat for our son Riley, this is a great way to get that personalized, customized look in your pantry. It could even be fun for dog treats for a four-legged family member. If you're traveling for spring break, don't overlook these travel-safe containers. They are from the kitchen aisle, and although they are designated for salad dressing, they are ideal as a travel-safe container to help reduce the size of any liquid or beauty products for travel that you want to take. Loading, loading, loading. <laughs> Take from a larger bottle and transport with you. In the number three spot, I'm going to get some surprisingly awesome food products. I wanted to begin with a made in the USA product for this point. I know they're just light bulbs, but they are 60 watt LED bulbs. They're energy efficient. They're from a major brand that you find at Home Depot or Lowe's, and you get a two pack. For a dollar twenty-five, <laughs> with that illumination theme for a moment, this LED disco light is great if you're planning a party for yourself or a kid. It's also fun to project lights outside a window for a variety of holidays later down the line. These new candle warmers are available in white, black, and red. They accommodate a tea candle on the bottom and an oil or melt on the top. As an alternative, these oversized, more contemporary candle warmers that you see right. 
come in some great neutral colors. I was able to smell these scent brooms the second I entered my local store. If you want to add fragrance to a bathroom or an entryway, These are natural and provide a consistent fragrance for a longer period of time. Your options right now are eucalyptus or cinnamon. And from scent brooms to mop and actual brooms, these holders are back in store and I think they're awesome. They're a nice way to contain your cleaning essentials, a great way to keep a cleaning closet or garage area more tidy, and they are a fraction of the price compared to the $10 command branded version that I've seen sold at Home Depot. In the number four spot, we begin with a food product that got me rather excited, 60 second Barilla Pasta. To find a major brand tied to what's now a well-reviewed product, the Dollar Tree package is both larger and cheaper than the $2 and 22 cent version sold at Walmart, which is 1.5 ounces smaller. So a dollar twenty-five a dollar tree puts you in the win. These are great for a quick lunch or dinner. Just pay close attention to the expiration dates, which did not pose any problems at my local store. I don't know if Dollar Tree Corporate heard a complaint of mine in my recent Dollar Tree Secrets video, but family-sized mac and cheese has just debuted in the food section. I should mention this content is not sponsored. Dollar Tree is obviously not not paying me to make this video, I complained about Dollar Tree's price and sizing options, which thanks to this is less of an issue. Another win for Dollar Tree this month when it comes to food is potato gnocchi, a product of Italy on store shelves for a buck twenty-five. Again, from Italy, I am impressed. Also new this month at Dollar Tree, waffles or pancakes, where you can get six waffles for a dollar twenty-five or an eight-pack of pancakes for that same price. Before I expose some do not buy items at Dollar Tree in the number five spot, we head to the Dollar Tree Plus section, where the super popular LED cart projector lights that I tested in the past are five dollars. These are highly entertaining for your passengers, primarily kids, on a long road trip. Another fan favorite car interior LED strips to interject some personality and color into your vehicle. Red and blue are the color options at five dollars a piece. And at that same price, something I bought for my mother-in-law, a mini LED Himalayan salt lamp. She loves them, and now she has a mini version. At three dollars, one of the more spooky things I've seen at Dollar Tree. At a first glance, these animal solar lights with those accusatory yet inquisitive eyes staring back at you like those paintings with eyes that follow you around the room. The only animal that seems remotely friendly to me is this owl. Approach with caution. For spring cleaning, under the bed storage bags to tackle seasonal clothing clutter is a nice grab at five dollars. And if you only have a shoe issue, aka you're my wife, this under the bed shoe organizer at a dollar twenty-five is located in the regular part of Dollar Tree. Despite being not as big, it could be an option. This side table that looks like a stool for five dollars could provide a more stable home for plants or flower pots. And now onto something I would not buy from the Dollar Tree Plus section through my ongoing research, every single one of the Dollar Tree Plus cleaning products costs less at Walmart. With the one exception being the 38-ounce Dawn dish soap, which costs 84 cents more at Walmart, the rest of these cleaning products are unfortunately not a good purchase right now. In the number six spot, we head back to that $1.25 pricing on this lip scrubber, which looks both pleasant yet possibly painful. It is new on store shelves this month. For a more full body approach, body scrubbers with a silicone suction cup on the back might make for a wonderful shower companion. If you were concerned that I could put another scrubber into point six, behold, chuckle infused scrubbers. They're available including this one in the shape of a glove. If you're considering a different hair color, but you aren't ready to commit, this Komen temporary hair color is back. 
for a spa day at home or winter feet woes, this moisturizing foot treatment is essentially a mask to handle extremely dry, cracked, and otherwise slightly unhappy feet. Something I've never seen before. Shower to go refreshing wipes. These might be great after going to the gym, after a yoga class. I wish they had these when I was in high school. I would have discreetly offered it to my track and field coach. He could have used one. Great guy, but this could have helped. And the number seven spot before I get to DIY is organization on a dime. This spring themed storage basket that looks large enough to fit toys and blankets could also work for a generous, oversized Easter basket. This is a considerable size for $1.25. New spring themed mugs, plates, and bowls in this nice, refreshing mint aesthetic color could be an inexpensive way to upgrade some serveware pieces in your home. If you prefer a floral spring look, a new range of spring themed plates, glassware, all the way down to oven mitts with that same design, are another nice option. Glass bowls that give me a flashback back and a wonderful sense of nostalgia to what my Nana had when she would surprise us with candy are available this month. Perfect for salad, fruit, or other favorites for a party like chips. These oversized serving bowls in black or silver might be worth a look. And this brand new reusable flat rectangle food storage container could serve well for transporting a lasagna or other types of baked goods. I'll showcase one of my favorite Dollar Tree sections ever in a moment, but in the number eight spot, not to be anticlimactic, but it's nine mini removable hooks. Now these could come in handy if you need a more friendly place to store your keys. My keys ended up in the fridge last week, which made me question my own integrity. Many of you are well acquainted with the ever popular Dollar Tree phone noodles and the DIY hacks that surround them. Dollar Tree now has a phone noodle cutter. This could work for the hobbyist, or really anyone that wants to enjoy the sensation of slicing into a foam noodle, perhaps as a stress management tool. I'm just trying to think outside the box. Also for crafting, these permanent writable white stickers are great for labeling, organizing your pantry. I was excited to see these permanent vinyl papers. My wife is a hardcore cricket user. She has made magic with these. Craft scrapers, which are great for removing stickers, window decals, anything you'd want to protect a surface with during some type of removal is another great grab. Something brand new that I don't quite understand how to use is this bead tray, which I find both intimidating and overwhelming. What do all of these numbers mean? What is that? I understand it holds beads, but someone please educate me beyond that in the comments section. And speaking of trays, these kids' activity trays are washable stackable, and they can help keep an area more productive or tidy in a playroom. My next point begins with an entire section that brought me both train... Make sure y'all check out the Buy Me A Coffee wish list. Help your boy out. You know, we got a neon sign on there. That one's going to be nice. We got the sticker design. Shouts out to the stickers. Y'all saw it in the... Uh, Thumbnail for the video. Quality and happiness just by walking toward these brand new faux flowers with fruit. As I turned the corner in the store to approach these, I felt as though I had entered a botanical garden. Everything from peaches to lemons and limes, surrounded by bright and surprisingly real looking foliage. If you prefer your faux fruit without the flowers for decorating, The new faux fruit at Dollar Tree looks astonishingly realistic. Look at this, given the price, $1.25 for something this real, oranges, carrots, lemons, and apples, all winners. From faux fruit to the real deal, $1 will get you four seed packets for every fruit or vegetable under the sun that you can grow, and if you didn't catch that, four packets for $1 makes this one of the last remaining products I have ever seen at Dollar Tree. 
That's still priced at a dollar, not a dollar twenty-five. If you prefer a more premium offering, these three packs of premium bulbs give you some higher-end options for those bulbs and plants when they grow, or whatever it is you currently have. These new planter trays with wheels on the bottom can help with the transportation of a heavy pot, making this a highly practical $1.25 product. I have not yet tested these seven pattern spray nozzles in a wide variety of pleasing color options. If you are more familiar with this product and you've had some success, let me know. Garden gloves with some wonderful spring and summer ready looking patterns are another great buy for $1.25 a pair. For point 10, before I get to the bonus section, it's Easter decor galore. I have been waiting a while to say that. I hope that didn't push you the wrong way, but everywhere you look at Dollar Tree, it's Easter, it's vibrant. Entire walls displaying bright, festive happiness. Everything from Easter doormats with Hoppy Easter sentiments, these Easter gel stickers, which are a very popular product in our household. They end up on the windows and the mirrors. There's multiple different designs. Decorative Easter pillowcases in both blue and pink are priced so you can possibly justify the cost for just using this for one month's worth of display. And as you can expect, Easter wood signs with every possible imaginable saying readily available right now. Many different types of Easter baskets that incorporate woven, plastic, and felt options caught my eye, and I found what I believe is the largest selection of mini Easter eggs I've ever seen. And for a more personalized approach, I love these ceramic letter eggs, so perhaps various members of your household can have their own initialed eggs ready to go. And now for the bonus section. If you watched my recent Dollar Tree shopping secrets video, you are likely aware Dollar Tree accepts coupons. This coupon expandable file folder could be highly useful to store your coupons in a glove box or in a purse. A storage container with handle is great for members of your household if you all share a single shower but use different products. This could also work for a communal shower in a college setting or the gym. And if you don't shower and just use those shower wipes I mentioned earlier, you might not want to buy this. And finally, frosted window film. If you have a window that faces a street oh, or another neighbor Easter and you girl, still want to let day. some light in through the window but block others from peering <laughs> straight so in, awesome. this could be nice Hilarious. to have on hand. And it's definitely been nice having you here. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Bye-bye. Now, tragically obvious, that reasoning with the bitch is not going to work, Tom. You have to hit her. I'm an assistant district attorney, for Christ's sake. Tom, you have to get past this. It's okay, Paget. Really? See, Paget, she just gave you permission. Oh! Okay, my friends, I got a really good one for you today. Today, I'm going to show you how to make the old school fertilizer utilizing human urine. Yes, that's correct. This is actually a very beneficial nutrient for the garden and a versatile one. We can use it in one of two ways. Now, I'm gonna explain a little bit about the ways that we can use it and then at the end of the video, I will take you out and I will show you actually my process of uh, utilizing it, all right? So, why would we use urine? Because urine is, as the name implies, filled with urea, which is a form of nitrogen. Also ammonia nitrogen, it has both of those. N plants need nitrogen and urine is already in the form of urea and ammonia, which is a very usable source by the plants, okay? So besides that, it also has all the trace elements, sulfur, magnesium, calcium, all of this stuff. It's all there, it's all the good stuff. Now, here I'll show you the, I just pulled this picture off the internet and you see all the things that, that human urine contains. Now, that's the scientific analysis, but we don't even need that because ancient wisdom tells us that this is some of the finest fertilizer you can get, okay? It's full circle. Everything returns to the earth. Everything comes from the earth and returns. And it nourishes the earth, 
Remember, the amount of life that is present in any given place is in exact proportion to the amount of death and decay that has happened there. So, let us utilize this gift of nature in one of two ways. Now, the one way is as a compost activator. And another way is as an actual fertilizer for the garden. So, first I'll talk about the compost activator. Now, when would I need to use this uh, for the, the compost and why? Well, because nitrogen is critical to the decomposition of organic matter because it's what fuels the bacteria that decompose things. All right, that's why if you put green grass clippings in a pile, they will decompose into compost, basically soil, within three weeks to a month because of all the nitrogen that was in there. As opposed to if you take, if you first let the grass clippings all dry out and let the evap let the ammonia or the uh, nitrogen evaporate into the air, and you take the same brown grass clippings and put them in a pile, they will just stay there for weeks and weeks and months and months, and they won't decompose. The difference is all in the nitrogen and the microbial, the subsequent microbial activity that's happening. So, to do a good compost pile, we want it to be at, uh, have thermal mass, at least three feet by three feet cubed, okay? So it should be getting hot on the inside. There should be a lot of biological activity and things should be breaking down fast. You can make good compost in just a couple of months. Now, if the compost pile has gone cold, as the term implies, that means that there's not a lot of biological activity happening in the form of bacteria. There could still be in, in fungi, but the bacteria is the fast digestion that we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this urea form of nitrogen and we're gonna dump it straight onto the compost pile. And that is going to supercharge the microorganisms into deteriorating and decomposing the organic matter, okay? It really works well. And to activate the compost pile, you can simply use human urine neat, okay? You don't have to do anything special. Just put it straight. You can even urinate directly onto the compost pile and that will have explosive results because it's all there. The nitrogen, the trace minerals, all the good stuff, all right? So that's a good way for people that are a little bit squeamish about, oh, it's urine, oh, the smell and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, then that's fine. Just dump it on the compost pile then, all right? Problem solved. And we're, we're not wasting this gift of nature. Now, the second way to utilize it, which I think has equally tremendous, even better results in my opinion, and this is the way I usually utilize it, is to ferment it into a fertilizer for the plants and the soil themselves. Really the soil. Remember, we feed the soil, not so much the plants, okay? Healthy soil, a thriving soil food web, whatever plant you put into it is going to thrive. Okay, so we're really focusing on the, the health of the soil. So to do that, we are going to, we're not going to use it neat in the garden this way, okay? I mean, we're not going to, we don't just dump fresh urine on plants, okay? It, it's, too, it's too high in salts and in the, the forms of nitrogen. It, can, it will burn them, and it doesn't smell well, and there's just no need for it. Some plants can respond really well to it, like comfrey or God knows thistles. Uh, they thrive if you just urinate straight on them because they love that stuff. But your garden vegetables, you, you don't want to be dumping urine straight on them, okay? What you want to do is this. You want to ferment it first using, of course, the leaf mold. The microbes that are in the leaf mold are going to break down the compounds into urine and it's going to make it plant available and it's going to dissolve any residual antibiotics that are in your urine if you're on that or if you eat a lot of toxic food, chemical laden food, a lot of uh, uh, industrial beef and all that kind of stuff. Those antibiotics come through the flesh of the animal and into you and they're messing up your microbial balance and all of that, it then goes out through your urine and into the soil. Fermenting it with the leaf mold will decompose all of that because these are the real heavy lifters. So let me show you the technique and then uh, we'll come back in. Okay, so here we are at our fertilizer production facility with all different kinds of the best fertilizers happening at the same time here. We need to gather our supplies. For one, we start with a five gallon bucket or whatever size vessel, depending on your operation size. And make sure this bucket or vessel has a very tight fitting lid, because you do not want this stuff to evaporate. For one, you'll lose the good stuff, but also the smell. Then we want to collect, we want to take our uh, bucket of leaf mold that we have already gathered from the soil. 
And remember, this is really key to all the ferments we're using. This is leaf mold. This is filled with billions and billions of microorganisms that are going to do all of the heavy lifting for our plant fertilization. So we will take a large handful of this beautiful black gold leaf mold, put it into the bucket. Next step is to collect the urine. That's right, my friends, there's a jug of urine. Now, you're gonna wanna make sure this has airtight seal on it and it does not leak. And you wanna empty this every day into your fermentation chamber because it will convert to ammonia and begin to smell uh, dramatically. So the way to do this is empty it every day into the fermentation chamber until the bucket becomes full. Then add another handful of leaf mold soil, put the lid on really tight and let that ferment for at least a month, but preferably three or six months or beyond. And then you just start another bucket. Okay, there you go. Now, the longer you let it ferment, the better. At least three months, uh, but preferably six, nine, 12 months and beyond, because it just keeps getting better the better the more it ages, okay? So, but let me warn you, this, unlike the fish fertilizer, the fish fertilizer, after about a year, nine months to a year, the smell goes away, and it just smells like rich tomato juice. It really does. The human urine um, fertilizer never achieves a, a pleasant smell in any fashion, so be prepared for that, okay? Uh, but once you dilute it and use it in the garden, then it, it all goes away because it evaporates and the microbes eat it and all of that kind of stuff. So don't worry about that. But here's the thing. After uh, a year ferment, it's going to look like this. This is uh, actually going on two years. This is from July of 20. And you see how dark and rich it is. And there's actually material that's settled to the bottom, which is whatever kind of material. Uh, who knows? But filled with minerals and all kinds of good stuff, okay? Now remember, this, this smells very potent if you take the lid off. But we want to use this, okay, when would we use something like this, all right? This well-aged urea. And we would use it when we need, when the plants look lackluster, okay? Nitrogen is the compound that makes the plants have that luscious green to them or that shininess. If you see some, that new fresh growth and it's all shiny, the leaves are real shiny and you can just tell, especially if you have a seasoned eye, you can just tell a healthy, vibrant looking plant that's thriving. And if it's just kind of not thriving and it's just, just looks a little bit yellow, a little bit off color, uh, it's losing its luster and its growth is not as fast as it could or should be, add the urea, my friends and that will do the trick, okay? It's got everything that the plants need. This is, this is the fertilizer of our ancestors. They used this like it was gold because they knew the cycles of life, everything returns to the soil and replenishes itself. So we will use this. If you notice your plants being lackluster or a little bit yellow, begin with one teaspoon a gallon. That's all you have to use. All right, and then water it and observe. And you, you can put it on the, on the foliage as well at that concentration, okay? So you can overhead water. Uh, if that doesn't do the trick, if it doesn't boost it up, then one tablespoon a gallon, okay? But at that concentration, just do the roots, okay? Just, I mean, you could still do the, the, the foliage. It would be fine. Uh, and then observe, and a few days or a week later, if that doesn't do the trick, one ounce a gallon. But I wouldn't recommend going any higher than that, okay? and one ounce a gallon water in the roots and that will have that will have to do something to the plant i know it will from my experience i've been using this stuff for years okay so that's pretty much it my friends it's free it's very easy to use and it's extremely effective okay so let us not be concerned with fertilizer shortages or food shortages and stuff like that we can do for ourselves using these ancient techniques okay so if you gain something from the video, give it a thumbs up and also share this with anyone that you think can benefit from this knowledge because that's what it's all about. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks, don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please.